Hey everyone, welcome. Rabbit here, and today we're going to look at network hash rates and difficulties just so that newer miners and stuff coming in and don't really understand how profitability and all that works that you can get a foot on the ground and get basic understanding on what these means for when you're actually crypto mining. We're going to start with the hash rate here and we're going to use Ethereum as examples and then we'll go over some other coins just to show you how this fluctuates your actual profitabilities. But right now we're looking at Ethereum hash rate and we're sitting at 279 terahash. Now what that means is there's 279 trillion hashes on ethereum network currently right now so that's yours everybody across every pool that's the total hash rate now how that affects difficulty is right here we got our difficulty essentially every cryptocurrency has the preset average block find time managed by the network so average block time for a block being found is always set to a certain time frame and if the number of miners increase, the network hash rate goes up. As we saw previously, that's everybody's hash currently all on the network. And the effect of blocked find time becomes lower than the preset value. So as more hash goes to a network, obviously there's more hash. It's where everybody's working more and it drops that uh, block time find. So like you're finding blocks quicker. But as a result, the network gradually increases its difficulty. That is the difficulty of a problem that miners are solved. So the network will keep increasing it until the block find time reaches the preset value. So there's a preset value. And the more hash you find, the more people are working. And it brings the difficulty up because it's always set at a certain block time. So obviously, and it's going to work reverse. Once people pull hashes off, then the network difficulty will drop. And it makes it easier to find these block times. But it always sets around the same amount of block time. So depending on how many miners are there defines how hard it is and how long it takes to get that block up and down fluctuations. So essentially for a quick rundown is the more hash rate, the more people mining on a network, the difficulty goes up and you are competing and you're sharing the same rewards across more people, meaning you get paid less. Now vice versa, if people pull their hash rates off a network, the difficulty goes down, you get high rewards because you're not splitting up those payments between as many people throughout the pool and whatnot. So more hash rate, less profits, less hash rate, more profits. <laughs> Bonus. But we're going to take a look at a couple examples to see how this actually played into some other coins lately and what it could look like to the future for us because some things look like it's about to start changing. I'm going to start with Conflux here. If you see my last video, you'll know a few days ago they did reduce their block rewards from 7 down to 2 or 1.9 now or something. But as you can see, the network hash rate dropped dramatically. I think Wooly Pooly was at, what are they at now? Uh, 1.7. They're at like around the 500 mark. 413. I guess in the peaks back here, 560 giga hash. But yeah, see, they dropped off dramatically. And then we were looking at profits. We were down to 29 cents on my card from like $1.40, $1.50 when it was at 7 Now, uh, we're fast forwarding a bit now. It's been a few days since that happened. All this network dropped off. And it is becoming more profitable now to mine to a point. It's still not better in ETH like it was. But as you can see here, the total difficulty damn near dropped by half. 55% maybe. We're down to 568 thousand what is that something thousand million <laughs> i don't know but go by this number and this number about half half dropped off we're back up to 97 cents so from 29 cents back up to 97 cents because of that hash rate drop now is this profitable right now it is is this as profitable as eth and how it was no it's not keep in mind we're only getting two block reward now and we're back up to 97 cents from when we were at 29 cents when it dropped off that is because this network difficulty dropped dramatically because all that hash rate pulled away from this coin because it just wasn't as profitable anymore and it wasn't worth it. And now it has come back up. So if everyone flooded this network again to mine it because it became more profitable, then this would just drop again and, you know, it would be going back and forth. So it takes a couple of days. We've got an equilibrium, which means a balance out. And then we'll see what the actual profits are once it hits that point. But right now it is picking back up again. But that's just due to the fact that the hash rate dropped and the difficulty is down by like 50%. So that's one method of looking at it here. Now we're going to take a look at another coin. 
So that was a demonstration of people pulling hash off a network. Now let's look what happens when hash goes into a network. As we know, Ethereum Classic did drop its DAG file size to allow 3 and 4 gigabyte cards to mine longer. Now they're still in the talks of going SHA-3, which will be like ASIC mining and all that other stuff. But that's in the future. We're not here to talk about that. We are talking about uh, Ethereum Classic. It went up, as you can see. It doesn't go all the way back to when they did this. But originally we're around 2 terahash or something, 2.5 to 3 terahash on Ethereum Classic. And it was sometimes more and around equal to profitability with Ethereum. As you can see, this climbed dramatically. We have higher than the total hash here. If we go to actual our profitabilities, here I have it in on both. Where we go, click. I'm just using my eight card rig because if you saw my previous videos, I do got to split this up because I have eight four gig cards and I mean to do that in a video here soon. I'm running out of time because December 23rd or 4th is about to hit when four gig cards do fall off Ethereum. But with that being said, look at our profitabilities. Same rig, same hash numbers, same everything, power. And we are running at $6.58 profit after power on Ethereum. And Ethereum Classic used to be here, but now we're down by half. We are at half. So, yeah. Having that extra hash rate of only like an extra two or three terahash, which is, well, in terahash, two or three isn't that big. But on this network, it was huge. And you can see that we'd lost 50% of our profits pretty much. On AMD cards, Ravencoin is now more profitable <laughs> on RX 570 4 gig cards than Ethereum Classic is. So they used to be, Raven used to be heavy for NVIDIA. Now it looks, well, it probably still is. It's more profitable on NVIDIA cards. But I'm just saying at a standpoint with these AMD cards that you might Ravencoin mining, you'll be making more than you will be with Ethereum Classic. But now we're going to get hit with a big kicker here because December 23rd, 24th, we're going to be losing like, I don't know what it is. On Hive OS, it says about 40% of people on Hive. But throughout the whole network, I'm going to do with a lowball number, 20%. We'll say 20% of all cards out there. It's probably like 25 or 30. But I went there, and uh, as we went by our hash right here of 279, 20% of 279 is 55.8. So there's going to be 55.8 terahash. Yes, that's 55.8 trillion hashes. It's going to flood the market. <laughs> like, look what happened to Ethereum Classic when that went up three. If everyone pumped into Ethereum Classic, 55 terahash went in to Ethereum Classic right now. Well, they may as well just take this right off to what to mine chart. And that is nothing that's going to happen when uh, Ethereum 2 comes out. But we're not, I did a previous video on that and kind of take a look at that. Check it out if you haven't seen it. But we're just looking at the future here, which is actually the end of the month. Now, LOL Miner is allowing zombie mode to allow mining Ethereum a little bit longer. So I don't know what's actually going to happen there, how profitable it will be. But at the same time, Ethereum will become more profitable once that drops off. It'll probably take till maybe mid-January, end of January, to actually see the full terahash, depending on how many people use LOL Miner and zombie mode. But end of January, middle of January, that area, sometime in January, we are going to see the actual profitability of what Ethereum could be because we're going to see a drop in hash rate here, which will put profitabilities up based on their other findings. And we're going to see all these coins here drop in profitability because those four gig cards will be coming across these networks. And there's 55 gig, uh, 55 terahash that's going to be flooding the network here. So it's curious to see what's going to happen. I am very interested to see what's going to happen. <laughs> One last thing, low basin and looking at these numbers, I am in a bit of a dilemma because like I've been saying, I got to split up my eight gig card, but at the same time, is it going to be worth it? You will be making more, but we still have to see where all that hash rate goes. But if you're not sure how power works and depending where you live, it's different everywhere else. I'm going to click this off. Do my calculate that way it's only going to be for the 4g cards what to mine has a 4g section now so it dropped ethereum off because we won't be able to mine it and as you can see we have our numbers here this is based on uh six little over six cents here per kilowatt hour but depending where you live like where i live the more power you use the higher distribution fees like for an example 0.68 cents my whole house plus counting my crypto mining basement used I think it was $152 that's with me mining last month in power which works out to about this price but distribution fees 
was higher than my power bill. <laughs> so the more power you use, the more they charge you on distribution. And it was like $180. So when I worked it out, it actually works out, this is in Alberta, to $0.15. Cents. So there we go. We're going to that. Now we saw here, look at how much power I'm paying over the profit. So I'm going to be making on an 8 gig, 8 RX 570, 580 rig, they hash the same, $0.87 cents <laughs> at this point. And this is before the hash rate gets flooded. So what's going to happen when these all get flooded with the 4 gig cards? Like this will be dropping even more. So I'm up in the air. What I'm going to do, maybe I'll just give away these cards, try and sell them. 100 bucks, 150 bucks Canadian, I don't know. But I'm up in the air what to do. That's why I always key in. Efficiency is key, not hash rate numbers. If you're pulling out high hash rates, but it's you're pulling like 0 0.3, 0 0.3 is not bad, but like the 580s are pulling like 0 0.25, 0 0.27. They're not very efficient cards. And if you're just gearing for straight up hash rate, like you see in some of my 5700 videos, I can pull out 60 mega hash, 59 mega hash, no problem, but it's sitting at a 0 0.3, 0 0.3, almost the same efficient, slightly better efficiency than 580s. But if I get it down to, I'm only mining about 53, 54 mega hash, I'm up to 0 0.38, 39, 0 0.4 efficiency. Uh, so you're using a lot more power. So even out your power, the less you use for the most amount. So you want to run most efficient because this does come into play. And now when this drops, it might not even be worth mining it unless you're running your cards 100% as efficiency as you possibly can. So I'm hoping that kind of makes sense to you guys and what I'm kind of looking at here. So let me know in the comments if you guys made it this far. Hopefully you did because it's a lot of things changing up here, a lot of things going on. A lot of people don't really understand how their power bill is working. Obviously, it's different where you live, but let me know all of what you guys think below and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Rabbit out.